In this video, we're looking at a vertical Atwood machine with two masses that are given in a very general form. One of them is 2m and one is 3m, where m is just some unknown mass quantity. We're told the pulley is light and frictionless. And what this means for our force analysis is that the tension is going to be the same on each side of the string. In part A, we're asked to get complete force diagrams on these masses. So we'll put all the force vectors into the diagram. And in our force diagrams, each mass has the force of gravity pulling down on it. That's the weight. So I wrote it as a little w. And that's just mass times the acceleration of gravity. Well, for the mass 2m, that's a 2mg. For the mass 3m, that's a 3mg. The only other force acting on each of these masses is the tension pulling up. And that's the same on the left and right sides. So that's just a t pulling up on each of the masses. Notice the relative magnitudes of these forces were chosen carefully. I made 3mg longer than 2mg because it's a larger weight. And I can see which way the Atwood machine is going to accelerate. The heavier mass goes down and the lighter mass goes up. So I made T so that it was bigger than 2mg, guaranteeing the net forces upward on 2m. And I made T so that it was smaller than 3mg, guaranteeing I have a net force downward on 3m. Now it's not strictly mandatory that you get those relative magnitudes right in the picture, but it can help your intuition if they're accurate. Now in part B, we apply Newton's second law to each block, and then we'll set up a system of equations for this thing. And one important point about setting up Newton's second law in an Atwood machine is you have to have a consistent definition of the direction of acceleration. And because my mass 2m is going up and 3m is going down, I'm just gonna call the actual direction of motion the positive direction. And this guarantees that our acceleration will have the same sign for each of these masses, which is critical for the algebra to work out. So we apply Newton's second law to the mass 2m, and that's just F net equals ma. Now using the sign convention the way we defined it, t counts as positive, and that 2mg counts as negative. It's pointing in the negative direction. So there's my net force, and that's equal to the mass that we're talking about, that's 2m, times its acceleration. We do a similar thing for 3m, but for this analysis, downward was defined as positive. Again, it's just F net equals MA. This time our downward 3MG counts as positive and our T counts as negative. That's the net force and it's equal to the mass we're talking about, 3M multiplied by its acceleration. So that's the system of equations that we're asking about in part B. Now in part C, we wanna get the acceleration of the blocks in terms of G. So like so many of these Atwood machine problems, we take advantage of elimination. If I add these two equations, the t's are going to cancel. On the left-hand side then, we get a negative 2mg plus 3mg, which is just 1mg. On the right-hand side, we get a 5m times a. Our m's are gonna cancel out, and we quickly solve for a here. That's g over five. So the acceleration of this system is one-fifth the acceleration of free fall. Finally, in part D, we're asked to get the tension in the string in terms of M and G. Now that we have the acceleration, all we have to do is sub that back in to either one of the equations that we developed in part B, and we can solve for T. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this in the top equation. That was T minus two MG is equal to two MA. And I'll go ahead and solve for T, and this gives me a two M on the right-hand side, factored out of a G plus A. Now I sub in the acceleration that I found in part C, that's g over 5, and we can factor g out of this, so I have 2mg, and what's left in those parentheses is a 1 plus 1 over 5. That's 5 over 5 plus 1 over 5, in other words, 6 fifths. And as a final simplification, we'll combine our constants out in front, so that's 12 fifths mg. Now as a final check on your work, you should make sure the magnitude of this tension makes sense. I know that my mass 2m is going to accelerate upward with the force of gravity pulling down on it with a magnitude of 2mg. My tension better be bigger than that. It's got to be bigger than 2mg. And 12 over 5 is a little bigger than 2, so that works. If I do a similar analysis on the 3m mass, I know the tension must be smaller than 3mg, so this thing accelerates downward. And 12 over 5 is a little bit less than 3, so that works also. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, Check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.